Hello, I am back to review two more films that are out in Australian cinemas this week. I have one film that I quite enjoyed and one film that I absolutely hated. So we'll start off with the latter because get the negativity out of the way first, I think. This film is called Saint Omar. It is a French film directed by Alice Diop. And just to preface this, this film has got amazing reviews on Letterboxd. People absolutely love this film. It was actually France's pick for the Oscars last year, I think it was, for the best international feature category. So my opinion of this film is very much not siding with the majority of people who seem to have seen this film. This film is a fictionalized version of a true story about an African woman living in France who murdered her child and when she was prosecuted for this, she was completely upfront about the fact that she had done it and sort of used the defense of witchcraft to explain why she had done it. The director and writer of this film was at that trial and so she has written this sort of fictionalized version where we kind of see the trial through the main character who presumably is a stand-in for the director. This character's name is Rama. She is played by KJ Kagame. She's a writer who has traveled to where the trial is happening to watch the trial, make notes. I think it's meant to be for a book she's writing. We also see at the beginning of this film that this character has quite a troubled relationship with her mother and you sort of see in flashbacks throughout the film that this stems from her childhood. However, she doesn't actually feature in a lot of the film. During the trial scenes, the camera is completely focused on the woman who is on trial, Lorenz, who is played by Goslagi Melanda. This film is very stilted, very toned down, and this character especially so. She's completely blank and emotionless for most of it in the way that she's answering the questions of the judge and the prosecutor. And I suppose the decision behind this is because it's meant to make it more impactful when she does show emotion eventually, but I just found this incredibly frustrating to watch. You're literally just watching hours on end, it felt like, of a woman just blankly saying lines, describing the events leading up to the death of her child, but in a way that's completely unnecessary because right at the beginning of the trial, the judge kind of reads out her statement that she'd already written. It's not like we're finding out this story as it goes along. So many of the same facts kept getting repeated all the time, and I'm sure that's very realistic to a real life trial, but it makes for incredibly dull viewing in a film. You do learn various perspectives because you have the father of her child who is an elderly white French man and he has a completely different view of events or at least that's the way he's saying it but because you know that she did it because she confesses to it the only real reason to keep watching is to find out why she did it and that's never really discussed because she says that she herself doesn't know why she did it and right at the beginning says she hopes that this trial will help her find out why. The film is also made up of so many long slow takes, not just in the trial but everything else. We see this main character just walking down the street for ages for seemingly no reason or sitting in her hotel room, again with not that much expression on her face. Sure, it's all very realistic but it's not interesting, at least it wasn't to me. I just really struggled to find anything to connect to within this film, and I really felt like I wasn't gaining anything that I hadn't already gleaned from just watching the trailer. I think there's so much that the film is trying to say that could be really interesting. The main character is clearly relating this woman to her own feelings about motherhood. It's also looking at the way black people are treated in France, particularly as Lorenz is an immigrant and so you have all these white people like the judge and the prosecutor and even her defense lawyer kind of speaking for her and trying to explain away her actions in very racist ways even when they have good intentions. These themes are also underdeveloped and I assume that the film did that on purpose, but I just don't know what that purpose was because for me that just had the effect of making it very distancing and incredibly boring. The whole time I wished I could leave and go home and you really don't want that when you're at the cinema. Because everything is so blank and emotionless, it just made it very difficult to care about any of the characters on screen for me. However, as I said, this film has got really great reviews on Letterboxd. Lots of four and five star ratings. So if you are someone who enjoys this more art house style, then you might very well enjoy this film. I think for me, the fact that the themes 
were also interesting, made it extra disappointing, but like a waste of a story that could have been really interesting. Now onto the film this week that I did enjoy, which is a complete change of track. Renfield is a film starring two Nicholases, Nicholas Holt playing Renfield and Nicholas Cage playing Dracula. Renfield is Dracula's sidekick. He's the one who finds all the bodies for him, has stuck by his side since Dracula's days of living in Transylvania in a castle. Dracula is now in hiding, living out in an old hospital in New Orleans, and Renfield is feeling super bad about having to kill lots of people to feed Dracula. So he tries to only kill bad people. He goes to a meeting for people in abusive relationships and listens to their stories and then tracks down the people who are being abusive to the people in the meeting and gives them to Dracula. Of course Dracula is not happy about this because he'd much rather be drinking the blood of pure people like nuns or cheerleaders are uh, some of the examples that he gives. You then also have Aquafina playing a police officer. She is very upset that the town is so corrupt. It's pretty much run by a mafia family. One of this family is played by Ben Schwartz who's always very entertaining and she struggles with this as a police officer who doesn't want to be corrupt and wants to actually help people. Nicholas Holt is just born to play very pale, weird people. And he does this just as well as he did in films like Warm Bodies, where he also played a pale, weird person. He's very charming and British, and exactly what you would expect him to be in this character in a really good way. And Nicolas Cage, it's well known that one of the characters he's always wanted to play is Dracula, and apparently that's actually the reason he agreed to do this film. I read that he only does Hollywood films if he's the main character usually, but because this was Dracula, he agreed to be like a sub main character. He is so clearly relishing this role. He's exactly what you'd expect him to be as Dracula and it's so entertaining. The costuming and makeup was also really good and very much adds to his character. I even read on IMDb that Nicolas Cage had his teeth filed down so the prosthetic teeth would fit him better. Who knows if that's true, but it does sound like something he would do. The relationship between the two Nicholases is great. The whole theme of Renfield feeling like he's in an abusive relationship with Dracula is a pretty obvious one, but it does work. And I think having these two actors definitely elevates that theme and that idea, which could come across as a little bit obvious and cringy. I think without the caliber of the actors that they have here. A lot of reviews have said that they felt like Aquafina's character was completely unnecessary, that it was kind of annoying that she was basically a third main character and they found her particularly unfunny. I actually didn't mind her in this film. I think the premise of Renfield and Dracula and Renfield being the main character, there obviously would have been so many potential storylines that they could have gone with this film, but in the context of this particular story that they decided to go with, I think it actually works quite well. And I do think you needed someone else there with Renfield for him to talk to and interact with who wasn't just Dracula, because the whole point of this character is that he's trying to redeem himself and become a human being again when he'd just been this weird like half vampirish sort of creature. He doesn't drink blood but he does eat bugs to like get Dracula power and he's obviously now immortal because he's lived alongside Dracula for like hundreds of years. The film leans very heavily into the dark comedy aspect. There is lots of blood and gore and action it's very bloody, in fact, like fountains of blood just spew out all over the place, but it is very heavily comedic, so it doesn't come across as like a proper horror gore type thing. It's designed to not be that realistic and to be just silly and a little bit gross rather than scary. Considering it's a film about Dracula, I think it's fair to expect a lot of blood. The humour is unfortunately not quite as funny as it thinks it is, but it's amusing enough. I think it helped that because I'd read so many mediocre reviews, my expectations were really low for this film, so I did enjoy it more than I thought I was going to. It really is just like fun and silly, only about 90 minutes as well, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's kind of weirdly bright and colourful, even though it's a film about Dracula, and it had some nice little added things in there about standing up for yourself against someone who is being abusive and controlling controlling over you, but you also have Renfield realizing that he can't act completely the victim in this scenario because he did decide to go with Dracula knowing that he kills people and drinks blood and he did kill a lot of people. So it's definitely not groundbreaking in any way, but it is a lot of fun. And I think if you are a Nicolas Cage fan, it is worthwhile purely to watch him have the time of his life as Dracula. So that's all I have for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Are you interested in seeing either of these films? Let me know in the comments. I will see you in my next video. Bye.